that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as a What do you say about the man who has everything? Brad Pitt has a brilliant career, numerous Oscar nominations, his partner is considered one of the most beautiful women in the world, and they have a huge brood of kids. But you'd be surprised to learn that behind Pitt the celebrity is a seriously deep thinker, constantly questioning himself. A man intellectually restless with a revolutionary spirit which could easily explain his original and unexpected filmography. Brad Pitt is a man who, in his own words, is only satisfied with being unsatisfied. It all began for William Bradley Pitt going to the local drive-in with his family, sitting on the hood of the car on humid summer nights, eating homemade popcorn because his folks couldn't afford the concessions. But film was not a career option, so he majored in journalism at college Two weeks before ending his degree, however, he was done. With $325 he made from working on his father's loading dock, he got into his beat-up Datsun and headed for California. He told his parents he was going to investigate Pasadena's Art Centre College of Design. He began doing extra work and taking odd jobs, doing everything from dressing up as a giant chicken in 40-degree heat for a fast-food shop to driving strippers around in a limo. Soon he was acting, including a four-week stint on Dallas, guest spots on Growing Pains and Head of the Class, and then he won a part in the TV movie Too Young to Die. And then came the role that ignited real interest in Brad Pitt, particularly of the female kind. I bet you remember that scene with Gina Davis in Thelma and Louise. It was a 15-minute mega performance from Brad as the abs gifted grifter who seduces Gina's Thelma then robs her blind. The course he took, however, was never predictable. And by 1994, Brad Pitt had well and truly arrived. He scored a plum role opposite Tom Cruise in Interview with a Vampire and sent millions of women wild as Tristan Ludlow in the epic Legends of the Fall. Brad has described this as something of a dark time. He rebelled against his good looks by grunging things up and hid from the mania of the celebrity surrounding him by living on his couch and, quote, smoking too much dope. Seven was notable for three reasons. One being it was the first of now three collaborations with director David Fincher. Two, he won his first Golden Globe for his performance in this film. And three, he fell in love with and became engaged to his on-screen wife and rising star, Gwyneth Paltrow. I've been a big fan of her work for that very reason, so it had to be Gwyneth. And then it had to be Gwyneth. It didn't last. Brad buried himself in his work and took home another Globe and his first Oscar nomination for Terry Gilliam's 12 Monkeys. He rejoined David Fincher for Fight Club, playing Edward Norton's uber cool and sexy alter ego Tyler Durden, causing mania and social havoc. Brad smoked, fought and rocked a red leather jacket throughout the film, owning a brand of sexy cool that his contemporaries could only dream about. He also had spectacular chemistry with his co-star, Ed Norton. Now, we met because uh, of this, but we met sometime earlier. Yeah, a couple months ahead. Before the script was written. About, about oh, we met in December, uh, I think. I was we... instantly attracted. <laughs> <laughs> to the <laughs> idea of... <laughs> being lovers. <laughs> Brad continued to surprise, next taking a role in Guy Ritchie's Snatch as an Irish gypsy boxer, no less. Inspired by co-star Benicio Del Toro's performance in The Usual Suspects, he pushed his accent to the nth degree. No one could understand him, not even the other actors in the film. Again, his unconventional choice here notched up his critical respect in the industry. Again, however, this success was overshadowed by events in his personal life. Brad married Jennifer Aniston and was again half of the most famous couple in the world. First of all, what's more important than love? Nothing I know. In an odd subversion to his leading man status, Brad chose to join an ensemble cast for Steven Soderbergh's Ocean's Eleven, an update of the 1960 Rat Pack flick. It wasn't just any ensemble, however. Clooney, Roberts, Damon, Garcia, just to name a few. 
The film was a huge success and is now considered one of the slickest and smartest crime capers around, which is why the cast came back for round two and three. And I think it was a contractual thing for everyone because no one wanted to work with each other, but <clears throat> um, we, our arms were twisted, really. As you can tell, the first movie made firm friends of the cast, and it was smart talk and pranks all the way during the shooting and eventual promotion of the film. Clooney, Damon, enough with the, the nice guy thing. I mean, come on. Cheadle, just not funny. He's not funny. Scotty Kahn, always trying to prove how tough he is. Casey Affleck, out of his mind. Brad was back in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons when the tabloids got wind that his marriage to Jennifer Aniston was on the rocks. Rumours abounded on the set of his next picture, Mr and Mrs Smith, of an affair between Brad and his co-star Angelina Jolie. And come 2005, the couple did indeed split, with Brad being photographed increasingly in Angelina's company. By 2006, Brad would officially adopt Angelina's two kids and so, Brangelina was born. Fast forward to present day, and they now have six kids and haven't discounted having more. Here's a few things you might not know about Pitt the Man. He is obsessed with architecture and has spent millions on a charity he founded to provide low-cost housing for victims of Hurricane Katrina. He is desperate to give up smoking, was awkward when meeting President Obama, is learning French because his kids are, and he's failing at it, he admires Angelina's decisiveness as he is the opposite. And journo after journo have gone on record to say how really ruffled and polite to a fault the man is. Wouldn't his mum be proud? But back to the acting. Next up was his hilarious turn in the Coen Brothers film Burn After Reading, where he played a dim-witted preening gym junkie. It was also a further reunion with mate George Clooney, and co-star Frances McDormand was happy to share a couple of interesting tidbits about these huge movie stars. I'm very happy to say that not only are they gracious gentlemen, they are also both totally, absurdly dorks. Their fans would be very unhappy with just how dork-like they are. There'd be more plaudits for Brad's third venture with director David Fincher in The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. His performance earned him an Oscar nomination, and David made a good point when hearing reactions to Pitt's acting ability, his talent and range. I guess it's because he, he's so visible in between films that it's always funny for me when pe people forget that he's a great actor and they come out and they go, my God, he was so amazing. And you go, well, did yeah. you see Snatch? Did you see, you know what I mean? They're, they're... So, you know, it is nice that he has that as a sort of secret weapon. Brad was then properly vicious as the leader of a gang of reprobate Jewish soldiers in Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards. And once again, he proved not only his ability to rise to the challenge of something incredibly different, but how down to earth the world's biggest movie star actually is. Brad Pitt was just, I don't know, you know, first time you meet him, you're completely starstruck. But um, he was just, I don't know, he was just cool and fantastic actor, so you instantaneously forget, you know, that he's this huge star, or like Quentin said, he's not a star, he's a planet. <laughs> he put on his producing hat once again for Terence Malick's The Tree of Life and gained massive critical respect when the film took out the Palme d'Or at Cannes, the highest prize a film can win at the festival. Moneyball, a film about math, to quote Brad, again shows Pitt the producer and Pitt the star working spectacularly in tandem with a boldness and depth nobody could have imagined when he started acting some 25 years ago. He has so many different talents that you wouldn't know about and, and, and he's just a great actor and a great person to be around. I really respect him in so many ways and learned a tremendous amount from him. If you, if you take the time and look at his filmography, it's so diverse and he so didn't do what was expected of him to do. And I am trying to learn from him in that and try and hopefully one day look at my filmography as something unexpected and cool like his. Brad Pitt intrigues, entertains and excites us. But the man behind that famous name seems far more interesting than we'll ever have the pleasure of knowing. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. 
Find or follow us at Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and at mnc.tv.